Well, welcome everyone. I'm Steve Savant. We're broadcasting live from the heart of Phoenix, Arizona on KXXT Family Values Radio. And I also want to welcome our online audience on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And I want to give a big shout out to Beyond Fear to Freedom, one of the best Christ-centered fellowships that provide a safe and loving community for women in recovery. Just go out to their site and check out Friday nights where you could meet Vanessa and all the ladies that she's been talking about all this week. Just head out to the site beyondfeartofreedom.org. And if you want to write me out the show, it's Steve at 180 U Turn. That's 180 U Y O U and turn T U R N dot com. Steve at 180 U Turn dot com. Well, welcome back for our last episode today, Vanessa. Thank you. Can you imagine ever if we we're back on Monday show and we're talking about a uh, gal of darkness that you that God would reestablish with your son? Right. A brother that loves the Lord becomes your husband. Right. Shocker, right? Mm -hmm. You had a baby. Right. Shocker, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, and alongside ministries says, hey, why don't you help us and become part of our staff? Shock. Yep. I mean, how can this turn out so great, right? It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, and once I graduated and my full attention was on my son and within five years of, you know, being dedicated to my son and him only. And I was in that whole state of celibacy and no relationship and God was my first love and everything and staying to that. And I was okay with that. I didn't need mm -hmm. anything else. Um, God did bring an amazing man mm -hmm. into my life as soon as my, my son was secure enough because he was broken and mm -hmm. he was hurt. And there was a lot of mending that needed to be done spiritually with my son. And mm -hmm. that took a dedication mm -hmm. to him and him only for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And once it was built, he was able to let me go and date and be, um, mm -hmm. and be a woman of God mm -hmm. on the other side, mm -hmm. right? And dating you okay, and Okay, well, let's, like let's get into that because that's my favorite part of the show. <laughs> okay, well, I haven't dated in five years. Nine. Uh, nine years. I've been keeping myself co right yep. in the Lord, yep. right? I'm not fooling Celibus. around. I'm not making mm -hmm. mistakes. Okay, now I'm dating. What is it like to date in the Lord after your transformation, especially your it was such a great transformation. It was it, it it was a journey. You know, there was a little hiccup. There was a man that came in that was was um, trying to say that he was the man for me, and his intentions were very impure. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that I went through that experience because it goes to show what a man of God looks like and what mm -hmm. a man of God doesn't look like. And when the men that only have one thing in mm -hmm. mind, that is not of God, mm -hmm. of course. You and know? not a man of God. And not a man of God. By the way, just a little heads up here, just because I have four daughters and I've been saying this like forever. The guy says, what's the big test, Steve, for a brother in the Lord when you're dating? His hands. If he can keep his hands to himself, you're halfway home. If he can't, dump this guy. And right. this is, I, I hate to be so blunt, you know. But it's true. It's true because a man of God will respect the woman of God that's mm -hmm. in you. He will spe respect the God in you. And so when I went through that tra that that hiccup of a relationship um, and God did send me the man of God, he was so respectful and he did everything. He honored me by, you know, let's just be friends and let's hang out and just be friends. And we were friends for like, four months before we decided to, to court each other. Mm -hmm. And then he was very respectful of- Oh, wait, 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 stop for a second. What's the transition between I'm friends for four months and oh, now I have you using a new term in your life, right? Courtship, right? What's that? Right, when it turns physical. So we're holding hands oh. and he's putting his arm around me. Are you okay with that? And yeah, and you know, and that's where the transition first, it was just hanging out, going hiking, right. cruising around, saying hi, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that, going to church together. But when it started courting, now it's holding hands, uh -huh. coming over, right. having dinner. Mm -hmm. Now it's starting to be a relationship. So he, we gave it a year. We told God, we give ourselves to you for a year. Whatever mm -hmm. you make of it, it is yours. And by the end of that year, he asked me to marry him in front of the whole church. It was something that I've always wanted because I wanted to dedicate my life to the Lord, right? Well, let's back up for a second here because okay. I like to catch it all. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. So... You're into the word. I mean, you know, Vanessa, I've known you for a long time. You're, you are a Bible babe. You're into the word, right? Mm -hmm. You love God's word. I love it. Usually women who have a thirst and an appetite for God and his word 
And rarely do they partner up with a guy that's got the same match. What about your guy? Oh, he loves the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that attracted me the most, right? And Because he's a very handsome man, mm -hmm. and I would see him around, but I wouldn't ever see him with a woman. Mm -hmm. He would never be to the point where he was gawking, and, you know, because you see these guys, mm -hmm. they're always gawking at women or whatever, mm -hmm. but he was so respectful within himself, and he mm -hmm. was so kind to the elderly. I would see him at church, and he would always be hugging the old ladies, mm -hmm. sitting next to the old ladies, you know, talking to them, and, and they loved him, and he loved them, and it was just... The way he presented himself was kind, mm. considerate, and, and just heartfelt, right? Mm -hmm. And so the I piqued the interest on him. And, you know, he asked, he we went to Sedona um, New Year's Eve with a, a whole bunch of us. And that day, that night, it was the day we first started being friends. Um, and I think in March, he decided, that because we talked about it, just being friends. And then in March or April, I think April, he asked me to be his girl and and to court, right? What's it like going steady in your mid-20s? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, it was my uh, late 20s. Late 20s, yeah. Yeah, and so, it, well, no, no, no. It was my early 30s because oh. I stayed five years with my son yeah. consistently well, out of the long side. Sure. Um, so it was later on, but it was it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was so weird, but it was so engaging because I got to experience the worst thing about relationship mm -hmm. first, and then I seen the way a man of God should treat a woman of God, mm -hmm. and that was so desirable because I wanted to do everything right because I knew God said, "Honor me with my your body, and I will honor you in your marriage." Because mm -hmm. I would pray to the Lord, and He He would say profound things to me sometimes to my heart of course mm -hmm. and I knew that it was leading to the right direction and mm -hmm. when I honored the Lord with everything mm -hmm. I mean he's given me everything everything that I've ever wanted mm -hmm. and it's based on honoring his word being obedient into his word and everything no matter mm -hmm. what heart mind soul body everything mm -hmm. and he honored our relationship and everything that I wanted and desired in a man like being proposed to in the middle of our congregation. It was his day, his day of being um, baptized in the church. And he came out of the water, of the water, got dressed, came out. Everybody was there for his baptism. Mm -hmm. And he stood on the stage and bowed his knee and asked me to marry him in front of the church. And I thought, how selfless is that? Mm -hmm. to take away something that is honorable to him and the Lord, mm -hmm. but to also bring me into the mix of that. And you picked up on it immediately. It, it was, it, well, yeah. I didn't. I, I just thought that we were there for his, his bat right. baptism, you know, coming out of the water. And so I didn't have any clue that he was going to knee, but, take a knee. But when he did this, what was your, was your response immediate? It, yes, absolutely. Did the whole place go crazy? Hey, everybody was crying. Uh, there was not a dry eye uh -huh. in the house. His family how, was there. How long ago was that? That was three years ago. Three years ago. And when did you get married? We got married, uh, actually, it's coming up on three years. It's January 13th. 36 months out. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How's that feel? It's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, just a little side note. Just remember, the savant and his gal, 46 years. Oh, about, amen. In about 60 days. <laughs> wow. Wow. Amen. <laughs> you know, I want to um, be like you. <laughs> uh, well, no, you don't. <laughs> no, 46 years old. <laughs> well, that, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to give some, you're, you're plotting out, you're giving us the roadmap for relationships right now. You're mapping it out. What should you expect? What are the expectations? How, this is how it works. This is how it goes. And we all can be deceived in relationships. We all can be caught up in our own appetites. We right. just can. So we already know that the guardrails that God's installed are for our benefit, not, you know, I said one time I was teaching on the Ten Commandments in Durango, and somebody, and I got to the part where it says, thou shalt not commit adultery, and the guy goes, what a buzzkill God is. And I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> a buzzkill, you know, but he's, he's putting these up for our own benefit, our own protection. Absolutely. It's for your protection and for your marriage, mm. because if you keep those boundaries when, before you're married, because mm -hmm. you're honoring God, right, with your mm -hmm. body, and if you're honoring God that you can't see how much more faith that your spouse is going to be within you if you're going to mm -hmm. honor them while you're married mm -hmm. that you can see you know because it's that honoring like if you can honor God if a woman or a man honors God and and says I'm going to give myself to him until he gives me to somebody that he destines mm -hmm. me for that person that you marry is going to know that you're going to honor them mm -hmm. because you honored something that you didn't see mm -hmm. so you're going to honor that person that you're married to 
Because you love Jesus more than you love that person. And by honoring Jesus, you're honoring them. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that was the key point in our marriage that, that stems to even today is my husband is so secure because of the factors that I honored the Lord. Mm -hmm. No matter what or no matter what temptation or thirst or hunger or whatever human being comes with, honoring the Lord surpasses all judgment mm -hmm. or all all insecurities in a relationship when you do those mm -hmm. things. So he sets the, that 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 boundary in play. Not just for that moment, but it's for a lifetime of healthy marriage. Because there's no insecurity knowing that your spouse or anybody else is going to go beyond you because they honor the Lord before you. Listen, you know, you're looking for courtship ideals. You're looking for ways to date as a sister, brother. This is the way to go. I mean, I can only say after 40, almost 46 years, <laughs> It's been a journey for me, journey for other people. The longer, the better. We're totally into setting records if we can. Yes. We want to stick together with whom God has partnered us with. That's the way it was originally intended all the way back from Adam and Eve. When we come back from the break, we're going to finish a great week with Vanessa's story. We'll be right back. I have a I have a great one with Halo because Halo I told my husband I wasn't I didn't want any more kids, mm -hmm. and with Halo, God came to us and told us to have her. I was afraid because of all the damage mm -hmm. I did to my body. I wouldn't be able to have a normal baby, or I would die in the midst of it. And she was perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. well, we may have to talk about that. Hmm? We have to talk about that. You said Halo H A L. Amazing. Well, welcome back to 180. I'm Steve Savant. I'm here with Vanessa Sarsoza. If you want to write me, steve at 180uturn.com. I mean, and by the way, when we've experienced our, our U-turn, it's now your turn to experience a U-turn in your life. Listen, I love this line. I got this in jail one time. One of my gals gave it to me. It says, only God can turn a mess into a message, mm. a test into a testimony, a trial into triumph, triumph and a victim into victory. Amen. You agree with that? Absolutely. That's, that to me is a huge, huge issue. And I just want to say, uh, before we get back to the story real quick, uh, I was in jail one day. The officer said, Steve, you want to go in, uh, with me? I'm going to walk down and, and get the uh, gals that are going to come to your service. Oh, I've never been down there in the dorms or the hallways. So he took me down there and they started. Uh, this is the time where we used to have to go in with handcuffs. They'd handcuff girls together mm -hmm. to go to chapel. Think about that. I'm going to church in chains, right? And the officer said, hey, this gal wants to talk to you. And so I went up to this girl. Let's call her Dorothy. I don't want to do her real name. And she, I said, how can I help you? She goes, you're Steve. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, how long have you been married? At that time, it was like 37, 8, 38 years, something like that. She goes, to the same woman? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, uh, I want to ask you a question. I said, go ahead. And she said it really loud. It echoed down the hall, all the girls. And she goes, yeah, but have you been faithful? And there was that moment in my mind. And the officer looks at me, well, <laughs> and the officer, not the girl, oh. well, and everybody down there, including our, our some of our gals, like Cheryl, Cheryl and mm -hmm. so forth, they're all looking down for my answer. And I said, listen, by the grace of God and me trying to walk as circumspect as I can, I've never cheated on that woman. She takes her hands, puts them out. She had never been to chapel or church in her life and says, I'm going to chapel. That was her first time. I could have answered, if I answered negatively, she probably wouldn't have went. Yes, people would forgive me. Yes, my wife would maybe forgive me. But to be able to walk in circumspect in the Lord and be able to answer that on the yard in jail, all the Bible studies in the world, all the prayers in the world, don't touch that aspect of power 
of fidelity. And by the way, that was our new F word. That we became that became our new F word. Instead of using the bad F word, we would say fidelity. fidelity. A new F word. Yeah, Amen. I love that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen. You said, well, you know, I'm kind of done having. <laughs> I love how <laughs> how we're going to tell the Lord what we're done with. You know, uh, yeah. we're we're done with having children. Thank you very much, Lord. I have my new husband now. That's great. Uh, but yeah, so. <laughs> But <laughs> it's crazy thing. So my husband has a son. He was 18 at the time. My son was 15 at the time. And um, and I'm like, no, I want to be the princess. I'm married. I finally, you know, I, I want to have the ar ideal marriage where I'm the pampered one. I'm the mm. loved one. And, you know, me, 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 me. And God's like, all right, I'll let you have that for a month or so. <laughs> 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 and then one because I told my husband, I don't want no more kids. And we both agreed. Fine. No kids. Um, and so by, see, we got married in January. By the beginning of March, God laid it on our hearts to have a baby. And I, I challenged God because he laid it on my heart first. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no, Lord, I told my husband. I'm the one who told my husband, absolutely not, no kids. And who am I to go back and say, mm -hmm. okay, I want kids? And so I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if this is of you, and not because I'm married and now I'm having physical touch for my husband, that it's more of a thing, you know, you tell him. You tell him mm -hmm. about the baby. And you know what? Sure enough, a week later, not even a week later, he calls me on the phone on his lunch break. He goes, babe, the darndest thing, I've been thinking about a baby. I've been thinking about babies all day long. And I'm like, oh, man. So I told him what I've been going through and what I've been thinking. And we prayed on it and we prayed on it. And it was this, the fear, right, of all the damage that I did to mm -hmm. my body and stuff like that, that I wouldn't have a normal birth. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't want to have a mm -hmm. baby. M majority of the reason why is mm -hmm. because I didn't I was fearful of the fact that I wouldn't have a normal child if I did try to have a child. Um, and so I so we prayed on it. We prayed on it. And and. I said, fine, and, God, and my husband's like, if God is asking us to do this, who are we to stop him? Because mm -hmm. we challenged it already. Mm -hmm. So we said, fine. So we g I gave it in. But in the back of my mind, and instantly we were pregnant. Instantly, as soon mm -hmm. as we gave in, instantly we were pregnant. And I, in the back of my mind, I was fearful. I was like, Lord, Lord, let my child be whole. And I would post these things of God mending my baby inside me and praying over my baby and praying over the things that I was worried about and my organs and stuff like that and hoping the baby would come out. And every time I would go to an ultrasound, I was always like, Is, how's the heart beating? How's, you know, how's her fingers and toes and this and that? And like always trying to pay attention. And she was full of life, like from day one, she was like this tiny little thing. And she was just like jumping and like jumping for joy. You'd see her in the ultrasound, she was jumping for joy. And I was just like, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, maybe there's something wrong with her because she's so active, you know? Mm -hmm. And and no, as she grew, it was just like perfection. We were worried about finances, you know? How are we gonna afford a baby? Mm -hmm. You know what, when it's God's timing and God's will for this child to be born, everything's perfected everything's mm -hmm. paid for Every I, yeah. everything is laid into place right and god provided for my daughter for our daughter she i mean we didn't pay for anything and mm -hmm. nothing we had like three baby showers we had cribs and diapers for days and we had all the clothes of abundance that we could never imagine we had to pass them on that were still brand new we, we couldn't even put on as many clothes as she had gotten i mean god provided everything and you know what's crazy is the day she was born was the day I turned myself in when I when I when I turned myself over mm -hmm. to to custody in 2009 um, 2009 November 28th was the day I turned myself in 2018 November 28th a life was born mm -hmm. I gave my life that day and he gave me a life that mm -hmm. day and it, she was supposed to be born November 29th and she waited up all the way to that day the 28th to be born what's it like to be a mom now again it, it's it's amazing and you know the Lord and I know the Lord and my son is able to pour the life that he's learned into him, our daughter he is like a second father to our daughter you know he's there for her mm -hmm. he loves her she respects him and sh I think she respects him more than she respects <laughs> us <laughs> okay so so things have really happened for you and again by sometimes I was saying this to Vanessa at break I was saying you know sometimes I like to watch the Monday episode and the Friday episode because you go Monday is so bad then Friday you hear this glorious story and you go what happened in between right because you're seeing a bookend the Lord is 
into extreme makeovers. Right. I mean, extreme makeovers. You don't even look the same way. You don't talk the same way. You don't carry your. You're not a chola anymore. No, right? no. You know, you're 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 his here his child, and it shows. And the things on the inside are making its way to the outside. Countenance face. Your face changes. Absolutely. Right. Now you then you started working with alongside as a actual staff person. I was a staff person. God has blessed me to give back to what was given to me for a period of time. And that was a huge blessing because it's that love, right? God has given you the abundance, the overflow of love and knowledge that he's given you and the experience of life that he's, uh, he's allowed you to live. And now you can share that journey with other people that are just coming mm -hmm. out, just like BFF, the same thing. You know, they're trying to learn who they are in Christ. And so that person of of character that's been through things that knows things that's been through that experience helps them push them a little further when they're in that feeble position of like oh should I still do this yes you should because mm -hmm. the reward is greater than what you see right now mm -hmm. it's that community mm -hmm. it's that sticking with other people it's not living your life oh you know nobody understands me because I know it's that getting up and getting out and being in community and being able to share your your purpose and alongside was allowing me to do that for a period mm -hmm. of time to share back what was given to me and being able to pour into these women that were freshly coming out. And and it's it's a beautiful experience. At the end of the day, it's beautiful because God doesn't just give you one job. He gives you multiple jobs because your, your testimony goes out to millions, not just mm -hmm. one, because when you share it to one, that person shares it to another. And mm -hmm. that something from that nugget goes to another nugget, nu and, and it just keeps spreading and spreading. Sometimes it's important for other people who are just on their first steps of the journey to know that you can totally relate. You've been there, you've done that. Absolutely. This is why it works. You have kind of a license uh, early on in prison 15 years ago, uh, the gals came to me and said, we want you to bring, uh, it's called a bring it sermon. I had no idea at the time what they meant. And they said, we want you to bring it. And I didn't understand what that meant. But after I got done with it a, a week later and everybody was pretty <laughs> unhappy with the story, I actually <laughs> have to say, they said that that's the medicine that they needed. And on top of that, that they were okay. They gave me the license to speak to them because I had lived what their children lived. Amen. See, so when you have an experience and you say, well, my, my story isn't like Steve's. My story is like Vanessa's. Hey, you know what? I would give my right arm to have been brought up in a Christian home. I don't want my test. You know, I use it because the Lord uses it. Absolutely. But if but if I had my druthers, right, I'd love to be with a godly a mom and dad like you and your husband, right? Mm -hmm. I'd like to be brought up in the Lord with a loving community and people that are got my back. Right. You know, I mean, I'd like that. But we didn't go through that for whatever reason. And now our testimonies, our stories, your story, if you're listening today, your story could be hugely used. Maybe not in prison and jail like we were, right. but other places that you could really find God and he'll plant you, you'll grow. And this verse, by the way, has almost become almost my prison mantra. It says, he who waters will himself be watered. Mm -hmm. If you'll find, your, you'll find where you're supposed to be at. Well, you were at alongside ministry for a little while. And during that time period, you were able to give your testimony many times, I'm sure. Absolutely. You had people that, and people actually were willing to take the risk on this new journey to walk with somebody that's already been down the path. Yes. Isn't it great to have somebody, hey, I've already been there? Yeah, it is. It is. Because it's relating. Before we go, we only got a 30 seconds or so. Summarize what it's like to be in the Lord. It is the most amazing, amazing experience of my life. You know, I got to own a business, get married, have a, have a child, and... Um, raise my son up, you know, from who I used to be to who I am today is remarkable. And there's no other way that I can have done this if it wasn't for Jesus. Jesus is the number one, the transformer, um, uplifter, healer, everything that you can ever imagine he is in our lives. And without him, we are nothing. Well, we have to go. And so until next time, I'm Steve Savant. And remember, no one's outside the reach of God. No, not one.